it's uh, tricky. And so it's all catching and pulling and turning your wrist over because it's such a small hoop. And so that's how you can catch. Same thing if it's on the ground, you're, you're capturing it and turning it over. Right around me. Everybody come on in. Well, there's a reason we've had this game, Ojibwe people have had this game for, I don't even know how long. You know, before, before Europeans, we had this game. And with that uh, interaction, we've lost contact, at least with it here, especially in my village, at, you know, in Fond du Lac, you know, that there's no one around that, that remembers the way where it was played. There's, uh, Tom Peacock has a story though, that the old ball field up on Res Road before it was a baseball field, it was a lacrosse field, you know. So one of these, when this pandemic's over, <laughs> uh, I'm making sticks partly for that. I make a set of sticks and we're gonna go have a game and sort of reclaim that space. It's relatively new to me. I haven't been doing this for that long. Still a learning, learning process. I was really getting into it and then this pandemic happened. It's really fun to play with people that know really well how to play. Menominees, Ho-Chunks, Ojibwe's, Lakotas, Dakota, and man, is that fun. Just to play with like high level, man. There's another wager game that guys play sometimes that I think has really cool sort of community values, is everybody who's gonna play that day brings something, a blanket, tobacco, whatever it is, beads, earrings, something. And if you're gonna play, you put your stuff in the pile. And then you play, and if I score, I get to go to that pile. And I get to take anything I want, but I don't get to keep it. I have to give it away to one of the spectators. So it's that idea of being selfless. 11 years ago when my twins were born, I was, I was at a birch bark canoe making event out on Fond du Lac. And uh, Marvin Defoe said to me, Hey, you're gonna make them babies a Dickinoggin? <laughs> and he's like, you guess you gotta make two, you know, after he learned I was having twins. I always love these. And these I just finished with beeswax. And so that's how I learned, you gotta really into steam bending wood uh, with that. And, and so since I knew how to do that, this wasn't as much of a, a leap to get into. And no one from, that I know of from Fond du Lac makes them. And that's sort of one of the big hurdles to people playing is just having sticks. And so I figured, well, I'll start making sticks. But when I picked one up and I actually played with it, it I don't know how to explain it, but it's magical. It belongs, it belongs. It's just probably part of um, the way I see the world, I guess, as an Ojibwe person, is we've lost so many things. And to be able to reclaim, revitalize uh, the game play itself, but also the art of making them uh, just sort of appealed to me. There's a lot of different stories of the origin of this game and where it comes from and what it's for, and that all differs depending on where people come from. But there's a reason we have it, and I feel like there's a reason that we have it back again. There's some reason I have, I, it spoke to me in a certain way. I don't know how to explain that. This is the, the grandest game. You know, and it, the one thing that I think that it's more than a game is there are sort of three items that we have as Ojibwe people. We have our war clubs, we have our drumsticks, and we have these sticks. And I think we need that now more than ever, especially in a time where we're in a pandemic that exposes our weaknesses. Funding for this program is brought to you by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.